Welcome back to my channel Zero to Siva. We are in day four of week one of this mule training. I hope you have completed the previous video where I discussed about the ESB basics. Now, in this video, we are going to understand uh, what is orchestration, what is mule, and actually what is this any point platform for mule. In this video, you are going to get a 100 foot overview of what we are going to cover in this entire course. Okay, let us get started. Let's assume that uh, we have multiple web services like service 1, service 2 and service 3. Now, whenever a request comes to my application, uh, I want my code will take that. And what I can do is, when our request comes to my application, I can create a message and keep it in a queue. Then I can use an adapter to invoke the service one, integrate with it, get the response. Once I get the response, I can store the response in a variable and then keep the message again in the next queue. Then I can use another adapter to consume service two get the response, store it in another variable and then keep the message over next channel. Then here I can use a transformer maybe which can actually extract the data from the response of S1 and from the response of S2, transform it, create some data and then keep that in a next channel. Then I can use another adapter to actually use the data to consume S3, get the response, keep it in another channel. Then I can use a transformer to transform the data in whatever format I want and give the response back. So in this case, my application is having a logic to talk to multiple services and give the desired result. So this process is called as orchestration. What is orchestration? It is nothing but a process of coordinating with multiple services and getting the desired work done. So here in this case my application is performing I can say orchestration. So orchestration is a process of coordinating with multiple applications and getting the desired work done. Normally in Mule we write uh, orchestration logic and that orchestration logic also will be written in an XML and in Mule we call this as one flow because the message is flowing from one location to other location through all this set of channels. This is one flow. And we write this flow logic in an XML. One XML can contain multiple flow definitions. And one Mule application can contain multiple such XMLs. So basically, whenever we are writing a Mule application, we write all the logic in a XML. In XML, we write multiple flows and Mule application contains multiple XML. And this Mule applications contain orchestration logic. Okay, fine. We have written a Mule application. Then where do we deploy it? We need a Mule runtime. So we deploy our Mule applications inside a Mule runtime. Remember, this Mule runtime is not a web server. It is not for deploying uh, web applications. Mule runtime is only for running Mule applications which contain orchestration logic. So normally what we do is we will be having either a web application or a mobile application. The requests from the customers or clients will come to web application and this web application or a mobile application may want to execute the orchestration logic. So what they do? This web applications will invoke my Mule 
applications right so my mule application whatever i write has to be exposed as a web service either a soap web service or a rest web service normally in mule we encourage you to expose a mule application as a rest application so basically every mule application which contains orchestration logic mostly will be exposed as a rest api so that it can be consumed through either a web application or a mobile application or some other application okay so first of all if my application is exposing rest apis first thing we need to do is we need to create a contract we need to design the api so to design apis mulesoft provides us something called as api designer so normally what we do is as a first step we design our api contracts in api designer and mule internally uses raml restful api modeling languages language so we write our raml files which contains a contract of our api we design these rammels in api designer okay but then once these apis are designed how do we get feedbacks from our stakeholders within our organization right we need to publish our api specifications some in some location which are accessible within our organization so we publish the apis whatever have been designed in api designer into something called as exchange what is exchange again exchange is an application provided by mulesoft where we publish our artifacts like apis not only rest apis we can publish soap apis or in mule we have something like connectors we can have multiple things like templates etc in exchange you can think of exchange as a repository for publishing all of our organizational assets of course our raml apis are also assets so once we design apis in api designer we publish them to exchange exchange is another application provided by mulesoft okay now if the apis are published to exchange everybody within your organization or the stakeholders who are involved in this integration they'll be able to see your apis and they'll be able to provide their feedback about your apis then maybe you can take their feedback again redesign your apis and publish next version of your asset on to the exchange then slowly you finalize the api design fine whatever apis we are publishing to exchange whatever apis we are publishing to exchange are visible only within our organization but what if i want my apis to be consumed by somebody outside of my organization yes we can publish or we can share the assets from exchange into something called as an api portal so whatever we publish to api portal can be actually uh, will be actually visible to anybody outside of my organization also so till now what we did we just designed our api published that api into exchange and the stakeholders uh, reviewed it they approved the api design and if required i can publish it to api port but till now i didn't do an implementation right how do i implement these apis how do i actually write the logic so mule provides us something called as any point studio this studio is an ide integrated development environment which we use for writing mule applications or for developing mule applications okay so we develop mule applications using studio then where do we deploy it again mulesoft provides us with something called as mule runtime yes. 
So we deploy our applications developed in Studio into Mule runtimes. But within our organization, uh, your administrators might want to manage multiple runtimes and deployments on those runtimes. So MuleSoft provides us something called as runtime manager for managing all the runtimes. Okay. Through runtime manager, what we can do, we can manage these runtimes and also the deployments on this runtimes. Fine. Now my implementations are running within the runtimes. Any client can consume my APIs by hitting the URL. Oh, but I don't want my APIs to be exposed to everyone. I want to implement security. I want only the clients who are having credentials, appropriate credentials to access my APIs. So how to secure your APIs? Security is again a common concern. I don't want to write logic for security again. I want to declare how, how I want security. I want security to be applied to my application. So again, for managing our APIs, we have we can do that using something called as API manager. So APIs can be managed using API manager. So now what I can do is whatever API is there in exchange, I can register this API with whatever is in exchange with API manager. We can create an API to be managed inside API manager. I will register this API which is in exchange with API manager. API manager will give me a proxy uh, application proxy is also a mule application it will be automatically generated by the api manager if i point uh, my api manager to my api in exchange so that proxy i can deploy it onto another runtime called as gateway runtime what is a gateway gateway is also a runtime just similar to mule runtime but specially designed to host proxies so whatever proxy has been given by API manager, I can actually deploy that proxy onto gateway. Now the clients will not be able to hit, should not hit the actual implementation. The client should always be hitting the proxy. Proxy will actually uh, make a request to the original application, get the response and give it back. Okay. Then what if I want to apply security? This API manager has a web based UI. So through browser, I can log in to API manager and through browser, I can configure however I want the security. So whatever configuration you do on the browser, that will go to API manager. API manager will store that information in its database fine now in my gateway there will be an agent running what it will do is it will actually check with api manager at regular intervals hey api manager are there any new policies configured for this proxy application actually through browser if i have configured a security policy that information is stored in the database whenever the agent queries the api manager for any new policies the api manager will respond with this policy information the agent will download the policy information into the gateway the policy related code will be downloaded onto gateway now after the policy is downloaded if a client makes a request, the proxy will make sure that this policy related code is executed. If everything is fine, then only the proxy will make a request to original application and give the response. Suppose whenever the request is coming from client, if there are no credentials, what will happen? The proxy will invoke the policy logic. Policy logic will throw an exception because there are no credentials. 
So the error message will be sent back to the client. So like that, whatever policies we want to configure, we'll configure it through browser. We log into API manager and through browser, we configure the policies. That policies will be applied automatically to the proxy. So in our original application, we never write the logic for security or any such common concerns. We manage the APIs using API manager, right? So like that, any point uh, MuleSoft provides us all these components like runtime manager, API manager, uh, runtime, exchange portal, designer, and not only that, for managing access, access management, and it also provides us with various monitoring capabilities. So there is a component for any point monitoring, etc. Not only that, instead of you deploying your applications on the runtimes which are managed by you on your premise, MuleSoft also provides us a platform as a service called as Cloud Hub. What is this Cloud Hub? Cloud Hub is a platform as a service provided by MuleSoft. Actually, we call it as an IPaaS, Integration Platform as a Service. So Cloud Hub is an IPaaS given by MuleSoft. What we can do is, instead of deploying our applications on a standalone runtime on our organization uh, network or data center, we can deploy our applications onto Cloud Hub and Cloud Hub is responsible for uh, guaranteeing that high availability features, etc. So we can deploy our applications on Cloud Hub provided by MuleSoft. Actually, and MuleSoft provides us entire end-to-end -end, uh, facilities. Starting from designing, it helps us to design APIs using API Manager and also we can actually publish our assets onto exchange and portal it provides us with runtimes runtime manager api manager access manager monitoring studio cloud hub etc it provides a platform for designing developing and deploying mule applications so we say that mulesoft provides a platform for connecting any point to any point so that's why we say that MuleSoft provides us with a any point platform. So now you understood all these components together, whatever is provided by MuleSoft, we call them as any point platform. Okay, don't worry. In this lecture, I've given a hundred feet overview about the capabilities of MuleSoft. Right, we'll dig into each and every component in detail, and as we go on further, we'll work on each and every component, and you'll get confidence. This is just to give you a cap all the capabilities of MuleSoft. Okay, that's about any point platform and what is MuleSoft. I'll see you in next lecture where I'll show you how to create a simple Mule application and run it locally on your machine. Slowly, step by step, you'll gain confidence as you go on. So I suggest you to actually go back in this lecture and re-watch this lecture again. And uh, understand that as it is first time, maybe a lot of topics are discussed. Uh, you might feel a uncom little uncomfortable, but don't worry. As we proceed, you'll gain more confidence because we dig into each and every topic and work on it in detail. See you next lecture.